Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Loch Lee, cast strength batch one. Single malt Scotch whiskey, 60.1% ABV, no age statement. Okay, 15,000 bottles worldwide, 0 0.7 liters, whiskey base number 232685. And over here it has a, a a recommended retail price of about 60 euros. So this is 70% bourbon and 30% Oloroso, first fill Oloroso sherry casks. Um, I do like the bottle. This should be here, tire prints on there. So it does say um, Loch Lee uh, Distillery, Eichshire, Scotland. They're proud of their Eichshire. I, 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 not even sure I'm saying that right. This is a grain to glass distillery they popped up on the scene about two years ago it's like hey we've been producing for three years no one's noticed haha -ha. um they grow their own um barley at the dist at the on the farm which is around the distillery they have their own stills there two stills um ten thousand and is it six thousand jason is not well informed here i read it but i forgot it um, Loch Lee here, they have a 10,000 and they have a two, two, uh, two tall stills, 10,000 and 6,250 liters. Um, good. And 185,000 liters is what they produce or will produce this year. Um, they have to send their grain out to be their body to be malted. They can't do that themselves. They do distill it themselves. They do um, barrel it themselves. They do have the warehouses on site. But as far as I'm aware, they do not have their own bottling line. So if I take a look at the 15,000 um, bottles at cast strength and at 230 um, bottles per barrel there, we're talking about, oh, if they were all bourbon, right? So I have to do that math there. So we're looking about, let's go for 55 to 60 barrels is this batch alone, which is not bad, all right? So um, I'm going to compare it to something, of course. Kings Barn. Now, this is a six-year-old single cask first uh, fill X bourbon barrel, 59.7 percent ABV. So this is whiskey base number 220256. This had a recommended retail price of about 70 euros. This is 60 euros. Um, you just notice also from the color here, you can see this yourself. This is lighter. This is darker. It has to do with the cherry as well. And um, this was a German exclusive, the single barrel. Unfortunately, not many people in Germany wanted to buy a sample from me, and so I have more than half the bottle left. All right, now I'm not really sure I understand the concept of Loch Lee yet. I do know that they have the so-called here seasonal expression. The sowing edition, which is now the second crop, the plowing edition, which is still the first crop, which is a peated expression, the sewing edition is 100% ex bourbon barrels. Then they have the fouling, fow, fallow edition, which is 100% ex oloroso sherry butts. And then they have the harvest edition, which is port, oloroso, and bourbon. But on top of that, they also have the cast strength. And on top of that, they also have their R barley. So at the moment, if I understand this correctly, um, our barley is um, bourbon, sherry, SDR cask. So if I understand this correctly, um, they have six different expressions. Now, what I think is going to happen is especially here with the... Oh, prediction number one, within 10 years, someone's going to buy them. All right, so um, that's what I think, all right? So the guy who did this here together with his grandpa, this is going to be bought up in 10 years. I'm, he's going to cash out, I think. Prove me wrong, Loch Lee. 
All right, John Campbell is going to, he came from Lefroy after 27 years there. He'll have about 10 year tenure and then he'll retire and then someone else is going to take over. Um, what I also expect is, now don't get me wrong, is they have their seasonal whiskeys. They will change the percentage. The percentage of the STR for our barley will change. The percentage of port will change. The percentage of bourbon and so on. Even that where they get the casks from in the next couple of years will change. If I were them, I would say, okay, we have our seasonal expressions, batch one, two, three, four, five, and then I would start putting age statements on them, calling those are my core range products. And then I would hope not to be able to, they have dialed those in like they should be. Now, what I expect is, and I might be wrong, is that the cast strength version is going to have more experimentations, more variations. There'll be batch one that will be 70% bourbon, 30% cherry. Batch two will be maybe 70% bourbon and 30% STR cask. And batch three might be a mixture of STR, sherry, and bourbon. And then so on and so on. I think they're going to experiment and see how they're going to do this. Learn and, 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 and adapt and so on. Which is not bad. And that's the, the beauty of, of actually experiencing the growth of a new distillery. This is not something that's been around for a hundred years and have been doing that certain way. Um, this is something groundbreakingly new, and that is absolutely um, a very, very, very nice um, thing. So, oh, they use their water off from on site as well. They have full traceability of the ingredients going in the process, allowing a higher level of quality control and creating a flavor profile unique to Loch Lee. I don't see any mention of floor malting here. So, all right. So on the nose, I do get that sherry, but it's a. It's a there are so many different types of sherry, and I don't mean Pedro Jimenez and Palo Cotado and Oloroso and Mont Amontillado. Nine, no, I mean nine, no. I mean if you take a look at Oloroso sherry, how different it can be. This is not the syrupy, this is not the old school. This is a little bit of a sulfured sherry that has a fruity moment going in there. It's okay. Not, not, not wow. <laughs> Have I said that? Not, not, not enough. So, I like this actually a tiny, tiny little bit more. Uh, the King's Barns on the nose. It's just more around the around the statement that I like. Um, vanilla, a little bit of coconut even, malted barley, barley sugars. Um, nice, compact, good. So here we should have a fruit punch on the nose. We should have cigar notes and coffee beans. I don't get any of that. I don't get coffee beans. I don't get cigar notes. I do not get fruit punch. I could almost imagine a fruit punch moment. Maybe they have different fruit punch over there in, um, in, in the UK than we do in the, than we did in the US. And then on the palate, they talk about the signature Lock Lee fruit and Brazil nuts. You put out six bottles. How can you have a signature? For you at the distillery, yes, you may know what the signature Loch Lee fruit is. We don't. And it says fruit, not fruits. What is the fruit? Tell me. <laughs> Just don't write fruit. And then they talked about the finish is orange syrup. We'll see. And o aged oak shavings. I used to work as a as a woodworker. I know how oak shavings taste or smell and taste actually as well. I don't and I know what aged oak shavings they lose all their flavor by the way. All right. Cheers. Mm. Once again, my problem are the sherry casks. There's a little bit of sulfur in there. Tingles on my tongue. I had a little bit of smell. I didn't want to mention it. 
it's there. It distracts from the overall flavor components here. Um, fruit punch, maybe. Cigar notes, no. Coffee beans, definitely not. There's not a roasted moment going on in here. What type of fruit would I have? I would have more of a gooseberry, white currant, white plum, very, very light. Um, Brazil nuts, there's a little bit of nuttiness. I would not have gone for a Brazil nut. Um, I would have went more for a, ah, para nuts, para, maybe, maybe. I'm going to just let that, yes, sir, sir, yes, sir. Um, the orange syrup at the end, mm, the oak shavings, mm, there's not much really wood, wood influence going on here. Even though it's weird, I would expect here a lot more wood here. Um, it says here, carefully selected by the production team, Loch Lee Cast Strength Batch 1 is matured in first filled bourbon barrels. And Oloroso Sherry Cast that work particularly well at high strength, amplifying the fruit, nut, and cereal flavors that form our house spirit style. Arriving directly from Loreto, Kentucky, that explains something. Our first fill bourbon barrels help to impart flavors of Brazil nuts, coffee beans, and aged oak shaving. So they're getting Loreto, Kentucky is Maker's Mark. And the problem with Maker's Mark is for the last four years, at least, I think, if I'm right, they've been washing out their barrels. So they dump the barrels. They put water in it, they swish it around, they wash it out, and then they send the barrels over. I think it was Atna Mochan uh, that they also had their barrels from Maker's Mark, Beam, Sanjori, and they these barrels are a little bit different. What happened? Yeah, we started washing them out. Um, and therefore, the bourbon characteristic is not so good. And then um, Maker's Mark uses that water alcohol mix to cut down then the, um, the for the barrel. So they're using, um, that's actually an interesting, interesting thing to save money and to get even more flavor out of those barrels. And um, the Oloroso Sherry, according to the website says here, delivered straight from Jerez, our Oloroso Sherry butts present de delect delectable flavors of tangy, or tangy orange syrup and fruit punch. Oh. The thing that I like about this is I don't need to put water in here. It is 60.1%, but it doesn't burn. It doesn't overpower. It's very, very well done here. And I must admit, thank you very much for that. So um, a little insect decided to die in my glass. And it's only been a few. I just saw it happen. There we go. So get rid of that little fruit fly. Sorry. Over here. I like that. Just a little drink. Mm. A little bit of water as well. It's a clearer spirit. This has been distorted by those sherry casks with a little bit of sulfur. This has not. This is a single cask bourbon. Uh, pure. You have the vanilla. You have the barley sugars. You have a little bit of that coconut. It's not an overly complex whiskey, but yet it's a very, very, very nice whiskey for a, um, a nice summer evening. It won't overwhelm you with its powerful flavor profile and complexity, but it is a good sipping whiskey, I must admit. All right, with water, the Lachli. Both of these are non-chilled filtered. Both of these are natural color. It does get a more, better creaminess with a little bit of water. It's not a bad whiskey. This is going to actually get a solid C. It's not a C plus in my book due to that sulfur sherry moment, but it's a C. Value for money, 60 euros, C minus. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to collect all four of the seasons plus our barley plus the cast strength for 2020 the next couple of months and then do a, um, a blind tasting with all my with my super fans with the people who support me here and we're going to see if Loch Lee is something we're looking forward to or I'm going to smuggle a couple of these into a blind tasting as well someplace 
so that we can actually see what's happening in the development of that distillery. Dare to be honest and fear no labor. So um, question of the day for Loch Lee. Why do you not have your own bottling facility? And why do you not have your own molting floors? Or did I miss something? Could have been. All right, so my question of the day is, of the new distilleries out there, I'm going to name a few. Atnamachen, um, Rasse, um, Arbiki, Kings Bar, Nick Neen, um, Loch Lee. What did I forget here? Uh, 1770 Glasgow Distillery. I always forget the one over on the distill on, on Sky here. Tora Big. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's go to my book real quick. Anything that's been the last 10 years here that actually produces lag. Uh, Lindor's Abbey. Forgot about those. Um, so who else is producing at the moment here that I've had? Um, Dalmanach. Uh, Daft Mill. So what else do we have here? Um, Atnaho. Ah, they're not producing. Annandale's producing that I've had. So who else do we have here? Loch Lee. Uh, Torabeg. Wolfburn. Now they're over 10 years. Anyone who's not yet 10 years of age, what is your favorite cast strength expression from them? Ask me a distillery less than 10 years of age, your favorite cast strength expression from Scotland not Ireland not USA not someplace else from Scotland what is your favorite cast strength expression nah we'll see all right thank you very much for watching liking sharing subscribing and telling others about this crazy guy over here in Germany tasting often rare and exotic whiskeys bye bye